Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. This is Infamous NYC coming back with another video for the Stam Cirque. For those who are new to ESO, be sure to check out the uh, Battle of the Build page in which I posted a lot of content for those who are interested in both PvE and, of course, PvP. Uh, the the website here, Battle of the Build, goes in depth with different sort of vi um, videos and tutorials for PvP, as well as posting. I post uh, builds for every, literally every single class. So feel free to check that out. If you're looking for, for content, you're looking for build ideas, you're looking for tutorials, you can check it out. I do post different builds every single month, of course, that I showcase on Twitch. And then, of course, you can always check out a PvP guide for those who are new, who are looking for guides on how to build, how to pick a class, how to pick a race. It's located here. There's multiple videos here for those who are interested in looking for PvP guides as well as for PvE. I will be posting some more content, especially for the Grey Morph patch. With that said... We're looking at the Stamina Sorcerer for next patch. I'm probably going to be playing this dual wield setup along with my Magicka DK. Uh, this is on this particular uh, this particular class is an orc. So, but it can, you can work with many different races. So, whatever particular race that you have, it, orc works well because of the extra movement speed, and of course, you gain extra weapon damage. Like I said, this is a dual wield stamp sorc. Um, running two pieces of Balor, especially because next next patch, you're not really going to need as much critical resistance as you typically would this patch because they're changing it so that everybody has a base critical. This represents roughly 20% critical damage reduction. And so for this patch I'm running, you, you can get away with running multiple pieces of Divines or well fitted, gives you the opportunity to kind of mix it up. But for the chest piece, I always do recommend running a reinforced chest to gain the most out of your physical and spell resistance. So like I said, running a two-piece Balor set. And for the Stamp Sword, one of the one of the good abilities that Stamp Sword has is of course Hurricane. Hurricane, of course, is your major resistance buff, but it also deals damage in an AoE, and of course, as you can see, it does grow over time. And so that works really well. Of course, it deals direct damage, which works really well with the particular setup that we're using, which is Twice Fang. Twice Fang, the five piece, gives you penetration, which is what most, which is what most uh, medium armor builds lack especially if you're fighting heavy armor builds or if you're fighting against other um, light armor builds medium armor builds you typically don't have a lot of penetration unless you're running a sharpened weapon so as hurricane basically is running because it deals direct damage you'll be able to proc twice fang literally 100 percent uptime and it gives you quite a bit of penetration for this particular build for the mundus i would run the lover and of course utilizing Divines will increase the amount of damage because the lover will give you penetration. Um, in terms of the, the set, you can find this. Of course, these drop in Craglorm in the Trials, and then you're going to be going full weapon damage. The other set um, that can be utilized would be, of course, Black Rose. Black Rose did get a change for the current patch. It, for the coming patch, it no longer gives you uh, major major protection instead it gives you this little debuff that lasts for two seconds um, that reduces the amount of damage that you take by 10 percent and increases the amount of damage that you deal by 10 percent as well and of course it's off of blade cloak so whenever you hit blade cloak and whenever blade cloak deals damage it will get it will, you will gain a boost of damage by 10 percent and take 10 percent less damage as well as taking 25 percent less damage uh, because of major evasion from AOEs and of course it gives you a major expedition for four seconds and of course it lasts 14 seconds so it and it deals damage every two seconds so when you're in the middle of a fight you'll basically be keeping this buff up 100% of the time I would recommend running either you can either run Nernhoned if you want more heals coming out of your two abilities because you're going to gain some some healing from Bloodthirst as well as some heals from uh, Blood Craze. And of course, your main and only source of CC is going to come from DB. On the back bar, utilizing Dark Deal, Resolving Vigor, Critical Surge, uh, which works really well because you're gonna, your medium armor, you're going to have a pretty decent amount of critical. And of course, Hurricane. And then uh, Boundless is on, I think, on, is on both bars. It gives you extra stamina as well as increasing your light attacks, as well as giving you access to. Um, the swords that go overhead, four of them 
you can stack up to four of them and, and it deals damage over uh, 0.3 seconds and then on the back bar utilizing temporal guard for the minor protection so when you're on your back bar you'll be able to heal looking at the build i guess in completion taking a look at it here you can see this is fully buffed this is a no cp build uh, medium armor it's too heavy and the other set that we're going to be running is tava's favor the reason being is because tava's pairs really well with balor because basically tava's gives you says whenever you dodge an attack you receive the blessing of tava generating nine ult over three seconds so it allows you to keep the balor buff up for the most amount of time especially since stamp sork since since the sork class gains access to ultimate cost reduction it pairs really well together so that you're you're able to keep up dawn breakers you have that stun since it is your only form of stun on this particular build that i'm that i'm uh, showcasing so and of course to maintain the balor buff up as, as much as possible as it gives you both um, the extra weapon damage as well as the penetration for next patch for 12 seconds so literally you can dodge roll two two or three times gain the buff and by the time and by that time, hopefully have a DB close to being ready because you'll have both your normal alt gen with just three alt per second and then an additional three alt per second from the blessing of Tavas. Fully buffed, you can see it here. 14k magicka, just shy of 25k health with 30,000 stamp. This is your recoveries with a pot. And then you can see fully bust, buffed up. We're at 4767, and that's of course is with all weapon damage and the infused glyph on the back bar. So we're not procking for any weapon damage. This is this is 100% uptime on the 4790, 4767. Just have to make sure that you're light attacking on your back bar, which you should be so that you have access to the additional uh, bleed from running an axe on the back bar, and then of course we're running an axe on the front bar coupled with a dagger. And then you can, whatever you can run, whatever is comfortable. I would definitely recommend at the very least running a shock lift so that you have access to minor vulnerability. And then whatever it is that you're missing, you can run physical damage. You can run if you don't have any enough magic of recovery. You can run the magic recovery glyph. It's entirely up to you. Or you can run poisons. It's whatever basically works for you as a player. On the, as you can see, looking at the tooltips, we're running Bloodthirst. The last tick of Bloodthirst deals 5,000 damage. The whole ability deals just shy of 11,000 damage. And of course, you heal for 63% of that, especially next patch, because healing is being nerfed from down from 50% because of Battle Spirit all the way up to 60%. So the more source of healing you have, the better. In this particular setup, we've got one, two, three, four, five different sources of healing. And then, of course, your six would be uh, utilizing a pot. And, of course, orc passive also gives you, I believe, a little bit of healing. Because whenever you deal damage with a weapon ability, it says you heal for 600. Of course, this can occur every four seconds. And, of course, we're running three three different weapon abilities. So this will basically be procking whenever possible. And I think that's basically it for this build. Like I think, it was, I, think I mentioned we're already running uh, gold food, the lover mundus. And of course, tripods. I think that's basically it. This is probably what I'll be running. I've been farming for um, the twice fang set. All I, I need, the, I need two daggers. Actually, you know what? I don't even need the daggers anymore. I think I just need the uh, the necklace for next patch. So hopefully, I'll be able to get that and then just farm for the BRP. I've already got Balor, uh, Tabas. You can craft, not a problem. And then I already have um, a back bar axe. So pretty, pretty, pretty easy setup to get looking forward to playing this build like i said before if you have any questions feel free to leave it in the comment section and of course feel free to like comment and subscribe and of course be sure to check out battleofthebuild.com i'll leave the i'll leave the link in i'll leave the link in the in the, the description and i appreciate you watching take care god bless